didn't get either. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, the only person that is of age is Calvin. And she's even older than me. Yeah. She's like, like three years. And I even, I was like, but. And then um, the um, um, scarecrow, he's a teenager. Scarecrow is a teenager. Riddler is like the most. Well, the guy, the guy that plays in this is one of them, but um, Riddler, uh, I mean, all those guys, Riddler, Nick Wynn, um, Two-Face, and the show of Martin Dan, one of them, those guys are all in the film. What are y'all talking about? Gotham. You ever heard of Gotham? You know what Gotham is, right? Though. Gotham it's a, City? Yeah, 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 it's Batman. It's pretty Batman. It's pretty Batman. It takes place during the time of Jim Gordon and how he grows. Oh, gosh. I think they ought to take it back when Jim Gordon was a baby. Of course, Barbara has to because that's his wife. I was like, that woman is crazy, too. She figured out that one was bad, or she figured out that one was The one he's dating now over Barbara. Okay, I thought I liked movies. These people were taking it to another level. I never really thought of her being bad. Who could she be, though, that would be like... Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. I can't. For some reason, this computer is not letting me orient the whiteboard, so y'all just going to have to... Are y'all going to listen, or are y'all going to keep on talking while I'm talking? Okay, it is rude to do that. Okay, is everybody finished now? All right. We're going to talk about Z-scores today and finish up the chapter. Monday, we will go over the review and homework questions that have been sent. So, that means we're getting ready for what? Yes. So that means y'all are supposed to run around in circles with a confused look on your face, right? Yes. And you're supposed to ask, when's the test due you, and when's the homework due, you, and all that. Now, I went over to the 120 class this morning, and half the class has not even done any of their homework. So I just wonder if that is true in this way. I'll have to check and see. See if y'all gonna wait until Sunday night to do all the homework. C scores. Let me pull up a problem that came out of the tenth edition uh, statistics book that y'all have. And I'll just go to Google and pull it up. LBJ versus Shaq. There you go. Write that question down. Hold it up a little bit. Down. You don't have to write it word for word, but just get the gist of it. And there's six numbers that you have to write down because if you don't have the six numbers, you can't do the problem. So the LBJ has the tallest president. Who is the tallest president's edition? Lincoln and Johnson were the tallest. They were the same height. Who was the shortest? <laughs> FDR was technically the shortest, but you can't <laughs> count that because he was in a wheelchair. But I think it was uh, one of the earlier presidents. Adams. Mm -mm. It was, uh, it was 5 4. I can't remember. 5 4. It was 5 4. I remember 5 4, but William Henry Harrison, I believe. Somebody look it up. I think he was 5'4". Who was the biggest president? Taft. Taft. He doesn't have his own bathtub. Who was the worst president? <laughs> they used to say that Carter was the worst president. I think Carter is not the worst president. Was it... It was James Madison. You were right. Oh. Okay. It was he five four? 
I thought I thought I remember five four. Yeah, I was trying to do a present and then five three seven five seven. Now, the question asks, who is relatively taller? Well any redneck can tell you that who's taller. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could pretty much have a low IQ score and say that. I mean, but that's not what the question's asking. The question's asking who is relatively tall. Now, what does that mean? What does relatively tall mean? They're, they're all in the group. In other words, who is taller? LBJ compared to presidents or Shaq? compared to basketball players. Well, you need to ask yourself, what is the qualifications for being president of the United States? Being 35 years old. <laughs> yeah, American citizen. Yep, that's one. All right. What is the requirements for being a basketball player? Well, you got to be decent in basketball, but you have to be tall. But why does the high school coach come to the second grade, six foot, six foot second grader and say, how are you, son? Why does, why does that happen? Because tall people usually do good in basketball because they're close to the what? They're close to the basket. Right? Now, let's think about the populations of the two people in question here. What is the general population of presidents? Are they tall? No. As we found out in the last class, there's all, I mean, you've got some that are five foot four, five foot four all the way to six foot, six foot five. How much? Somebody look up how tall is it? Oh, let me show you. Put it right here. 75. What is that? Six three? Somebody help me out. What's 72? 72 is six foot five. Right? Yeah. So that'd be. Six three? Mm -hmm. Alright. So five four six three. That's kind of a wide span, isn't it? But they're not tall, tall. Because Shaq is like eight foot tall. And what's that guy from China? Yeah, he's like ten feet tall. And then there's Duncan, he's from Virginia. Where I he's tall and I mean you've got all these people in there. what's the general population of the NBA? They're tall. So, technically, Lyndon B. Johnson is a big fish in a what? A little pond. And Shaq is a little fish in a big pond. Think about that. Now, they're asking which is relatively tall. Is Shaq tall in his world of basketball, or is LBJ tall in his world of president? So, we're comparing apples and what? Vanna, could you bring it down before I can draw one? And I don't know if it's oriented or not because I can't orient it for some reason. This computer is just messed up. So, let's see what happens. Looks like it's fairly decently oriented. So, let's see if I can bring this down where I can have that white paper to work with. There we go. Alright. So, the Z score formula is to find the Z score, you take X minus X bar and you put it over what? Standard deviation. Just come on in here and we'll put it. That's fine. I'm just glad to be here. Put anything in the way. 20 minutes later. So we got to find two Z scores the Z score for LBJ. Z score for Shaq.
All right, now I've given you the formulas. I want you to keep going. And I want you to plug and chug. Now there's a reason I want you to do it by yourself. Some of you know how to do it, and some of you know how to plug it. But I really do think that if you put your brain and you read the question, I think you'll be able to plug and chug. <coughs> if you can't, then we'll just mark you up as a failure, and you can live in the ditch. Yep. This is good. You quitting and leaving? Yeah, I'm leaving. Dang, you got mad and quit. Mad. Now, the reason I wanted you to do it by yourself is so maybe you could go through and read the question and figure out what is what. Well, I told you that X bar is what? The mean. So I need to go through and find the president's mean. There it is. There's the mean. What is S? So there's the standard deviation for the president. So there's that. And there's that. Okay, now I'm not trying to be a smart SA here. I'm not trying to be a smart elf. But if I have S and I have X bar then what do you think 75 is? Yes. The reason I'm not being a smart elk, I'm just showing you that if you just read the question and you know the formula, how difficult is this? It's not very difficult. So we're going to plug each other and we'll make that purple. I wish I could orient this thing, but it's about to drive me crazy. There is that. So plug and chug. 75 minus 71.5 over 2.1. Somebody crank that out for me. 1.67. And the other one, we'll take this, we don't have to, I think I've got that one. That would be 85 minus, I'm looking for it, 80 over 3.3. And what does that come out to be? So who's taller? <coughs> LBJ is relatively taller. Why? Because his score is further, furthest away from zero. In other words, he's taller. He's relatively taller. No, there's no question on this. What? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she ain't this. She don't. She don't cover this. All right. I, I'm sorry. I can't understand you. You're mumbling. That's how you do Don't these scores. That's how you do these scores. The further away, the more ER. What do you mean the more ER? The taller, the bigger. It has an ER, you know. Now, you're going to have some questions about 
economics <coughs> test and psychology test. You make a 50 on this test and you make a 34 on this test with a class average of this and this. Which one's better? Or which one's is higher score? Now in those, you've got to be careful because the one that is closer to zero is your, is your correct answer. So be careful on those. Test grades and heights are not, you know, heights, when you're talking about heights, you go with the higher. When you're talking about grades, you got to look at the question and, and read it and, and discern. And most of the time, it's the one closest to zero. Okay? Is there any other questions? Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on z-scores because if you can do this, then you can do what I'm going to give you on the quiz. Okay? Now let's talk about percentiles. Turn to your empirical rule, which they don't call it the empirical rule, and they screw it up and make it difficult in this book. But which 157, 127, or whatever, what was that page number, Dana? You remember? 387, somewhere in there. Uh, turn to that page because I'm going to draw a picture on the board. And. We're going to talk about percentiles and quartiles. So you're talking about another couple of questions on the test. The most important, if you're going to watch the videos at home, is going to be the box plot. I'll give you two or three questions on the box plot. We're going to do the box plot at the end of class. So you've got to know your percentiles. All right, when you look at your empirical rule, Kind of think of it I'm not leaving, but I want to be. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Okay. See you, Miss Wilson. Okay. Thanks for the biscuit. Alright. So in the empirical rule, this is two point five. I always forget this. I think it's 17.5. Somebody check me. This is 34. This is 34. This is 17.5. And this is 2.5. Add them up and you should get 99.7%. Um, if you don't, I got one on wrong, but I think it's 17.5. Okay, that's I always forget. I got a hang up on this one. I always forget this one. Okay. 
All right, now, the reason I'm showing you this, I know all of you know how to read your gas tank, but you use the gas tank to read the percentiles. Now, you can read the percentiles on your... What is this one? This is your 25th what? Percentile. This is your what? 50th percentile. And this is your 75th percentile. Based off of where's your 25th, where's your 50th, and there's your 75th. Now, the, the percentiles can also be called something else. What can they be called? Some of you math 120 people or some of you people who took it in high school. What can the percentiles also be called? No, you're a failure. Such a disappointment. What can they be called? Four times. Good job. <laughs> You did what? Who'd you ask? Why did you get out of my class? Good job. At least you, at least you're honest. Because anybody, I told y'all that, right? Anybody that, anybody that you meet that fails my class, you need to get away from them. Because one of two things is going to rub off on them. What are they? Well, you said it first. What are they? Laziness or stupidity. Because I think y'all seen, I pretty much cover all the bases for excuses, don't you? Not even the issue of painting class. Any action is always good. No coughing. All right. So this one is your first what? Four top. This one is your second four top. And this one is your third quartile. Now, as far as what to call which one, it doesn't matter. I just want you to know that the 25th percentile is called the first quartile, the 15th percentile is called the second quartile, and the 30th, the 75th percentile is called the third quartile. So, if you see quartile in the book, you know it's regarding to those three percentiles. Okay. Now, are these exactly 25%, 50%, and 75%? Well, these two are not exactly that, but this one is. And the only reason I'm showing you this with a gas tank, even though it's a little bit off, because here is empty, you're not really empty, but that ain't the reason I'm showing the gas tank under, I mean, the fuel gauge under the Bell curve. The reason I'm showing you that is because when we get to chapter 6, you're going to have to plot on this curve. And if I say plot the 20, 23rd percentile, you'll go, the 23rd percentile will be right in here. Uh, right in here. Why? Because you know that this is around what? 25%. That's why I'm showing just so it's kind of like making sure you find your way around the map, I want you to be able to find your way around this, not only for this test, but I want you to find it uh, for chapter 6. So remember, that it looks like you get a fuel damage. Now, there's two types of problems pertaining to the percentiles. I don't know what that is. The first one is given a percentile find the number. Alright, that's the first type. The second type is given the number find the percentile. Okay? The 
formula for this one is k times n over 100. Where k is the percentile wanted, n is always what? What is n? Number of items that are in a what? In a group. So n in here would be 15. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <coughs> no problem, please. Go up and over real quick. All right. This one is number of items before location over While we're in here, let's go see how many of y'all are losers. You want to go ahead and get it out of the way, huh? <clears throat> oh, Hubert, you can't pull up our grades. I'm not going to pull up your names. I think I'm stupid. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give y'all a chance to complain about something. I give you enough of that to just for the regular school semester. <coughs> Let's see, there's like 15 people in here. Yep, 15 on the roll. And we're going to go to chapter 5. We didn't do 4. So, let's go with, is it 6, A, 6, what? Yeah, to 6, C. And here we go. Oh yeah, we got some losers in here. One, two, three, four, five. Five losers and maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five losers and seven people that need to get on the ball. Because you did like the first couple of sections, you need to get finished. But you got plenty of time. Wait till 10 o'clock on Sunday night. That's when you need to start working on it. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you. Is there any names up here? Okay. So don't raise your hand and say, you're talking about me. You see these people right here? See those four people? And see that one down there? And... Don't be coming up to me Sunday. Don't, don't even come up to my desk Monday morning. Because you're going to get blown out or you're going to get embarrassed. Why? Because what are you going to be coming up to my desk for on Monday morning? Why would you be coming up to my desk? Mm -hmm, I'm not going to do it. Why? Because what week are we in? Fourth, I think. Somebody will. I think we're in the fourth week. Some of y'all haven't even got registered. There's two or three of y'all that ain't even registered. Oh, shh. <laughs> because it was under the flat tire in the trunk, the five flat tires? Oh, you didn't have one. Now, I will say this. The ones that are doing the homework, y'all are doing really well because y'all are doing exactly what you're supposed to. It's similar exercise when you get one wrong and what? 
What should everybody turn in? Will they? No, the class average on every class, pretty much, well, not calculus, because calculus students do their homework. They have to, or they'll, they'll uh, be lost. Um, is about 75. I'll get a 27 turned in for a final homework grade, and a 32, and a 57. And why is that? Because people are what? Lazy. Why are you raising your hand? Oh, you're saying you're lazy? Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know if you're lazy. Well, these four people right here. No, I just used that night. I just used that. No. How how do I usually do homework? Well, Mr. Mr. Patel, how do I usually do homework? Y'all three right there have had me before. How do I usually do it? Mr. DeVoe, do you do you agree with that? Do I try to trick you? Mr. DeVoe, I do because I don't <laughs> like him. Monday, since I'm finishing, the, this is the way it usually happens. When I finish a unit, which I'll finish today, I usually give y'all one day to come into class and send me questions online so I can just spend the whole hour and a half going over homework questions. And that's what I do that last day. If you send me three, if, if all 12, 15 of y'all send me two questions that day, we'll go over those two questions and y'all go home. But don't be what? That afternoon, don't be what? Oh, Hubert, I got a question. I'm sorry. You should have had your homework done. That's why I'm using Monday. Because you need to have your homework done by Monday so you can go over, you send me questions so I can have them in your folder so I can go over them Monday. Got it? Now, I will give you usually 24 to 48 hours after that day of review to finish up any homework problems that you haven't finished. Because, honestly, you should, be, you should have 80% of your homework done by Monday, except for the questions that you don't know. And then that shouldn't take no more than an hour, hour and a half to finish the questions that you don't you know, that you didn't understand. Whether it be two questions or whether it be five, fifteen questions. Okay? So these four people right here don't don't even come up to me Monday morning and say, uh, I was just wondering if you could I can tell by the tone what you're gonna ask me. So don't. Now there is one excuse I will take, and that is that you had a problem getting access code because of financial aid, and if financial aid will send me documentation, I'll give you an extension. But why is that really slim? Because everybody has what? A 14-day grace period that's free on the course compass. So you shouldn't even have that. Okay. All right. And I was going to look up something. What was I going to look up, Anna? Something in the book, right? Yeah, that's right. I need to go to the 120 book because I don't like y'all's book. What are y'all talking about? Mr. Patel, what are you talking about? He will lead you astray. You better get away from him. He's a wild man. He's talking about that. No, he's talking about getting drunk. That's what he always does. He gets drunk with Yeah. Do you know why there's like water or just like mojitos and all that stuff? Why there's what? <laughs> <laughs> all I heard was, do you know why there's so and so? Yeah, do you know why there's like water bottles, orange juice, and like all this? I don't know, but I wish somebody would go in there and get me a cinnamon biscuit. They did. I was going to grab a box because I went by the thing this morning at 8 o'clock and there was nobody there, but there was like three boxes of cinnamon and I was going to grab them. But my, 
you know my luck you know how my luck is my luck is as soon as I touch that box to steal it with nobody there that's when the girl or the guy will come around the corner and say what are you doing oh I was gonna get a biscuit and I got a whole box or two boxes in my hand so anyway Okay. So somebody go down there and get, give me one, Mr. Patel. Hook me up. Go down there and get me one. Hook me up. You don't like me? I'm brown. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Show them your green card. <laughs> you still don't like me. Alright, it's around here somewhere. I'm redneck, so they, they like me. All right, here we go. There it is. Total number of values times 100. I would like one if anybody wants to go down and get one. All right, there you go. Give me something to drink. I tell you what, just tell them, just tell them that Hubert's class needs a couple of boxes. And they'll go, oh, yes, please. No, I doubt it. Did you ask Mary if I was going to chaperone y'all's trip? No, no, no. You need to ask her. See what she says. She's going to lie to her. She's going to lie. She's going to be like, yeah, Hubert chaperone. Okay. That'd be like putting the fox in the chicken coop, huh? Yeah. You just failed the class. No matter what you do, you just failed. No, I got one. You don't give Vanna anything. And she does all the magnification. Yeah, Vanna's huge. All right, they're all what? So you can take them out by twos. What can you do with these two guys? Take one of those zeros out. 220 over 4, or you can cancel this 4 with this what? 4 will go to 2 and 5. 
Anything else we can cancel? Two and one. So what's the answer? 55th percentile. So the answer comes out to be 55th percentile. Or that number represents 55%. Now, is Hubert going to ask you the third 25? No, I'm not going to ask you that. I'm going to ask you just a number, and it usually will be the first one. I'm not going to ask you to count three over. Did somebody check what 11, what 22 over 40 multiplied by 100 is? Yeah. What is it? This is number. I'll read quit. All right, now what if you go the other direction? Give me the 72nd percentile. I asked you the percentile, so you got to use the other form. K in over 100. And you need to decide how to relate those two formulas to each other. However, you need to. I tell students if you're given the percentile, you use KN over 100. 50, what did I say? Second? What did I say? 75th. 70 72nd. I want to know the 72nd percentile. Seventy second percentile. So seventy two. Okay, I'm getting real irritated with this thing. 72 times what? 40 over what? Do we need a calculator? No, we do not. Because I'm going to take this out right here. Now let me ask you a question. We're changing, we're trying to find a number, okay? Now there's a rule that goes along with this. I haven't shown you the rule yet. I'm fixing to. I'm not going to get rid of that 10. Why am I not going to get rid of that 10? Why am I not going to cancel it out to a 5? Why, why, why do I want to leave it as a 10? Why do I leave that 10 now? Amazes me every time I ask this question. It amazes me. Why do I want to leave that ten? Hmm? Right now I hear mumbling. What? No. Okay. Let me. I'm not. It's nothing to do with cancel. Okay. It's nothing to do with that. I can cancel that four and that ten. Can I not? Why am I choosing not to? Because if you have a 10 in the denominator, all you have to do is move the decimal one place to the left, and you've got your answer. You don't have to use what? So always, when you have a fraction, and you have a 10 in the denominator, do not cancel that 10 out, because if you finish the equation without having to divide, all you have to do is move the decimal. You would be surprised on how many high school graduates I ask that question and they don't have a clue. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me because it's not on a standardized test. All right, so we should just quit. All right, 70, now y'all should be able to do this because 70 times 4 is 280, add 8 is 288. 288 divided by 10, what is that? It's a miracle. Now, here's the rule with this, with this, uh, let me put it over here. Let's go back over here. Hold on. There we go. We're right here. When you do your 
multiplication or division or whatever. When you do this formula, right here, you're going to get a whole number or you're going to get a decimal. Everybody with me? If you get a whole number, you do it. You just count that number and that's your number. If you get a decimal, I don't care what the decimal is, 0 0.01 or 0.9, I don't care. If you get a decimal, you round up. I don't care if it's 7.01 or 7.9, you round up to 8. So if you have a whole number, 6, then you just count. That's, that's the answer. You count 6 numbers. And then that's your 50 percent dollar, whatever it's supposed to be. So what do we have? So that means 20 what? 29. So that rounds up to 29. And then I count on my handy dandy table to the 29th number. All right, that's 20, and 29 would be right there. So it's 25 right here. This 25 represents what? The 72nd percent. And that's how you do those two formulas. Make sure you can do one of each of those questions. And I just did them for you. I just did that one, example three. And you can do this one for practice. Go to the next page. Oh, you don't have this one. I'll give it to you right here. Let me just go ahead and give it to you because that book is screwed up. Here's the flow chart. You can write it down. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Mr. Patel. You don't know anything else. Maybe it's just going to be in time to calibration. Can I get that press down? I've already done that five times. I've already done it. Uh, write that down. If you want to. This is the rule I just gave you. Do this, and you're going to get either a whole number, or you're not going to get a whole number. If you get a whole number, then you just pick that number. If you get a decimal, you do what? Round up to the next what number? Yeah, that's what I was. I can't. I can't give it too much. I've already restarted the program. I've already. I can't. This is a committee. All right. Don't worry about it. I'll just finish this class and go to another classroom and we'll work on this classroom. And just, there's something wrong with that computer. I think. Okay, the problem that I want to show you is right here. There's the problem. Referring to that same table, and I'll put that table up in, in a second. Um, they want to find the what? 25th percentile. So write that down. Find the 25th percentile of the following table. That's your question. And there's how you do it. And the table is that table down and the first question says uh, 
what percentile does 23 represent? That's the first question. What percentile does 23 represent? And I did a different number. Okay, so we're just going to do two different questions. And that would be, that'd be two questions you have for each of the tests. So find the percentile that represents 23. So that's when you're going to go to 23. I'll just finish right now. Let me take a look. I'll write the table over. Hmm. Over that little thing up there. Yep. I've done that. And when I do that, it just yeah, makes a noise. Yeah, and then it said the screen should go white. Yeah, it doesn't. Active manager. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll try that then. Well, then the class, of course, I find it. Then I hit freeze screen, please, so I can, down in the bottom right hand corner, and now freeze. There. And I'll take the roll. <coughs> Austin, Bandy, here. Bright is here, Chapman, DeVoe is here, Franks is here, Jordan is here, Kurz is here, Martin is here, dang, I'm learning y'all's names, Morris is here, you messed up, you should sit up here, uh, Parker, here. and Patel is here, Reigns, Swallow is not here. Wilmarine is here and Wilson is here. Okay, that's done. So the bureaucrats are happy. And Wilmarine is getting mad and leave. Why are you getting mad, Mr. Wilmarine? I didn't mean to make you mad. Yeah, good. Make sure you look sharp now. All right. Get that homework done. All right. What were we doing? Oh, Vanna, go ahead and unfreeze it now. All right, where did you say it was? Is it on the desktop or is it in the files? Is it in the program or on the desktop? system toolbar. So try down here. Down here? Uh -huh. It's not there. Well it says this little active manager yellow icon. I know that's right, what I'm looking program, for. Programs? Okay, go to programs. I didn't think about that. And see there it is. Active, no. Uh try active inspire see if it's in there. It's not. There it is. Okay. See? Um it's not there. It's a conspiracy. It's all Bush's fault. Yeah, if it's in here, it should be right there. It's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to find it in here. Okay. Under okay. file or no, no, no. <coughs> tools. This little icon. One okay. Help. Oh my gosh, we're going through help. I'm not going through <laughs> that. <laughs> About real quick. No. Oh, okay. Alright, well go here, go to that one. Alright, go down. Go down one more. Right. I'm looking for the item. Can you not do yeah. search in the search bar? Hit type in active manager. Try that, yeah, go right here. <laughs> and then right here just type in active. I didn't know what it was called. A C T I V. Active manager. Yeah. 
Yeah, no space. Well, it's right there. No, that's device bag. Oh, device. I'm sorry, I can't read. Yeah, yeah there's no space to it, though. Maybe it's not on your computer. Okay, so it just disappeared. Okay. Awesome. Yep. I mean, it don't work. All right, that's okay. I ain't gonna worry about it. It's a conspiracy. All right, what'd y'all come up with with the twenty-three? Twenty-fifth percentile. That's correct. Well, yeah, point two five times a hundred comes out to be twenty-five. And no, you do not need a calculator for that. Now, let's go to the next, go to the next page. This computer is just screwed up. Hold on. The next page says, right here, it says, find the 25th percentile, and basically you find 23. I mean, I'm not gonna. That's that's what they're doing. Find the, but change it. Change this to 35. Find the 35th percentile, and that would be 35 over 100 times 40, and then you would count. But what if you come out with a whole number? You count that number. What if you come out with a decimal? You round up. Okay. Yes, sir. So it says this is another method. From your computer, hold down the control button. And click on either your desktop or any so you know, control. Yeah, the control button on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Hold that down and then click on your uh, screen. Is anywhere on your screen or a file? Click on the random file. I don't know what yeah. I'm supposed this to is, do. Okay, this is what it says. From the computer, hold down the control button and click on either your desktop or any folder. In the menu that appears, select more. Here, right click. Right click. Right click out here where it's. And is there more? I don't see anything. Can I try to move it? Yeah, you can. Alright. Yeah. Twenty-fifth percentile, twenty-five uh, times forty over one hundred, and I'm gonna take that out right there. And that'll give me twenty-five times four over ten. And twenty-five times four is what? One hundred divided by ten is ten, so it's the tenth number. Because there are two numbers that are the same. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. If two numbers are the same, if you count uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and there's a 23 here and a 23 here, then you're supposed to make, uh, I think you're supposed to add them up and divide by 2, something like that. It says it on the uh, it says it on the uh, on the flow chart. I'll show right you that. Pull up flow chart. What was that Excel? Go back one. Up at the top, left node. Pull that back up. All right. Go up the top left hand corner. Top left. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Go back one. We're working with a train that only has one wheel on it. Go down. All right, right here. The value of the K, K percentile is midway between the L value and the next value and the sort of set that I find P of X by adding the L value and the next value and dividing by the total by two. So that's what it's, that's what it says here. We're going to talk about the box plot. Talk about it right quick. Because the box plot is real simple. 
But why do people get it wrong? People get it wrong because they don't know how to plot the box plot onto the number line. Because they're going to be taught how to get the number line. Because they mix up the two values. Um, you ain't found it yet? Looking for it. Okay. Um, so the box plot Let's have some values. Let's do some values. I'm just going to put some values on board. 23, 25, 25, 27, 30, 32, 33, 35, and 40. Okay, so you're going to be given some data, list data usually. And this is exactly like the question I'll give you on the test. I'll give you seven or eight or nine values, and I want you to show me a box point. I'm going to also ask you for your percentiles. What percentiles? Well, if I don't ask you for a certain percentile, and I just say find me the percentiles, I'm going from the third, the first, second, and third quartiles, which is the what? 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile. So if nothing's there, <clears throat> if I don't ask you for a certain percentile, it's assume that you're going to find those three. <clears throat> so what do you do? Well, first you've got to find the 50th percentile. Now, if you don't want to calculate it, all you got to do is count. How many we got? Nine. That's right. So what's halfway to nine? Well, you count four down and four up, and that's the 50 percentile. There it is. Which is the what? What is that? Now, that's the second quartile, the 50 percentile, but what else is it? The what? No. Median. So the median is your what? Your 50th percentile or your second what? Quartile. Now, this is the way I show this. I usually show y'all how to calculate it, but then I show y'all how to find it because some of you, like me, I care less about calculating. I just go to find it. How do you find the first quartile? We take the median of the median on the other side or the other side? That's the other side. The upper side or this is the other side? And the upper side. How many do we have right here? So how do I find the median here? Take these two and one. 25 plus 25 divided by one. And of course that's 25. So there's your 25 is your 50th percent. I'm sorry, your 25th percent. So what's this one? 33 plus 35 over 2. What is that? 68. 68 over 2 is what? 34. So 34 is your 75th percentile. Some people think it's a lot easier to do it that way. Now, People that have had me before for math, what if you do it set what if you do it differently from the book or the test question and you get twenty-five and the book gets twenty-five point five. Do I mark it wrong? Or and it marks it wrong. What should you do? Let me know and I'll put because if you get twenty-five and the book says twenty-five point five, I'm gonna give you the point because there's two different ways of finding it. Okay? Let's not make a big deal on it. Just come see me during office hours or after class and I'll look at it and then you get home. Unless you're Mr. DeVoe and you want to be Mr. DeVoe. Mr. DeVoe, what happened? I just noticed that. You all right? See, that's what happens. Sell drugs, that's what happens. 
<laughs> All right. What happened? You didn't. You didn't have a rest, did you? That's what happened to me. I tell my mom that too. services now? Nope. You need to. You only know, put you apart. That'd be a good place to get a, that'd be a good place to get a, uh, what is it, work study? Yeah, I tried and then I, you can get a job. I applied down here, like over the summer, and they wanted me to contact them. I never contacted them. I never got the job. Like, they had all my information. Well, I'll be glad to tell you to contact them. Like, See me after class and I'll tell you. Because if you can get on anywhere with computer services, give it a couple of years, you can get on with Clemson, you can get on. I know the lady that just left Anderson Campus, and she's making, she's making close to $65,000. A Gmail has just arrived. And she's making like $35,000, $40,000. And you can do it with the store campus. She's a good one. That's why they, that's why they grabbed her, because she was so good. All right. I have no idea what I Oh, men was what? Mm -hmm. And the max is 40. Okay, so the first thing you do when trying to find what, when you do your box plot, is to find your what? 90 percentile. Then push that to the side. And say, come back to that later. And then draw your number line. How do I find the increment? Well, find the mid-range, the mid-range, the mid-range, the mid-range, the mid-range. Keep finding the mid-range five or six times, and you'll have your graduation, graduated number. That's what people don't know how to do. They don't know where to put it. They don't know where to put the box. Well. What's the mid-range? What's 40 plus 23? And what's half of 63? Is it? I don't know. Is it? Let me make it 32, make it simple. Let's just make this 22. Now, Hubert, why can you, how can you do that? That's 23. What are we doing? What are we going to do after we get the number line? What are we going to do? We're going to draw a box on it, right? Does it really matter if I have a 22 or a 23 down here? No. But it makes it easy for us. So 22 plus 40 is what? 62. Half of 62 is? We're still going to argue, so it's not going to make any difference. You can say 30 in your head. 22 to 30 plus 22 plus 30. 52. And half of 52 is 20. 20 is 53. Is what? 22 and 30 53. Half of 53 is what? 26. 26.5 or 27. And 71, what's half of 71? 36. Now, let's say you, that's not good enough. You can find the mid-range here. 49, what's half 49? 25. What's this? I don't know 27 is 58. Half of 58 is... 29, somebody help me out. Half of 67 or 66 is 33. And now you can start just looking. 
What's the number between 36 and 40? Now you've got a number line, you can get your box plot. You'd be surprised at how many people come out of high school and they've had probability all semester and they don't know how to do that number line. First you start with your first quartile because we read which way? So you start with this one, 25. There it is. 25, that's just a coincidence. Alright, so 25 would be right here. 34. And then it's right about here. And this is your 25th percentile. And this is your 75th percentile. And then the median is what? 30. And that's your 50th percentile. And that's how you do a box plot. Now, will some people put the box on the number line? Yes. Let's put it right here. Is it wrong to put it above the number line? No, it doesn't matter. Now, what does this look like? What's it supposed to look like? These two are usually where it starts to level out, and this is usually what? The center. So if you have something like this, what is that? Skewed right, because all your data is where? <coughs> and what if all your data is on this side? Skewed what? Skewed left. All right, and that's how you do a box plot. So the first thing you do is get your what? 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile, whichever method you want to, by looking at it and counting or by calculating it. And then you draw a what? A number line based on the min and the what? And the mid-ranges. And then once you get all the... Now, how many marks do you have to use? Make it more in 23, 24, 25, <laughs> if you want to. But they're usually about four on each side. And you can what? That's all there is to it. Y'all feel good about yourself? Mr. Dillo, do you feel good about yourself? All right, y'all get out of here. Have a good weekend. And what should y'all be sending me Monday? Questions. Questions. Ask my instructor. And that's what we're going to do all day Monday. And then after that, you will pretty much. I hope y'all can see that. Yeah. I hate that you hit your head, Mr. DeVoe. My mom, huh? I mean, you didn't have a, you didn't have a, like a motorcycle that hit the ground, did you? Rash? I mean, road rash? Um, I don't know why like people look at me this way like the taller speed of the one. Like they always look at me this like I can beat the race. <laughs> so instead I want the race to I'm like my friend's car. Good blood. Yeah, I'm gonna get her out there. This is the race to the damn day. I'm like, all right, fine. You took our friend before I did. But I still beat him down there. So you know, we're down there talking about everything. Who's on the race today? Every time I go over that field, I didn't know. You know, it's all just far. I didn't really know him for like that. So, you know, I was coming down, got over the curve, hit him just the curve, over the curve. Uh, then I come down here and I cut my weight before. And you lost it. Yeah, I tried to do like the tuck and roll maneuver, but I put too late. So I ended up getting. Well, you need to be careful. Okay, I got my elbow, got my.